this is not a quick return in terms of investment, but in long term, uh, that's what we see the vision. For the mass transportation, we have to make it backbone. This is the new culture. Ya, mudah-mudahan tercapai dia cita-citanya lebih baik dan lebih. Kereta cepat ini menjadi tahapan kita Indonesia dari negara berkembang menuju ke negara maju. Saya saya Kadapi, saya berumur 39 tahun. Saya tinggal di Karawang, Jawa Barat. Uh, saat ini saya bekerja di Jakarta di sebuah perusahaan swasta. Uh, pertama saya dari rumah uh, naik sepeda motor uh, ke stasiun Cikarang. Rumah saya di Karawang. Uh, itu sekitar membutuhkan waktu sekitar 30 sampai 40 menit. We met Gaddafi at the Chikarang train station a little after four in the morning. Very early for us, but not for him. He was running late. What time do you need to be in the office? Seharusnya sih sudah berangkat jam kereta pertama tadi itu jam empat tiga belas. Tapi kalau naik kereta yang kedua pun empat dua delapan saya masih masih. So how long is the whole journey? Around almost two half or uh, two and a half hours. Two and, two and a half uh, wow. until three hours. Wow, yes. that long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is hard, but but yeah, it. Uh, ini harus saya lakukan. <laughs> and so at exactly 4:28 a.m., off to the city we went. Pilihan lain kenapa saya naik kereta ini juga. Tepat waktu sih, jadwalnya kan sudah sudah terjadwal gitu, tepat waktu. Jadi saya bisa sampai kantor pun uh, bisa tepat waktu. Iya, kalau naik mobil pribadi atau mobil yang tidak berbasis rel itu kan uh, kemungkinan terkena kemacetan juga kan sangat tinggi, apalagi di Jakarta. An hour and a half and 14 stations later, we were in Jakarta. Why do you choose to do this, you know, like? Live in Karawang and work in Jakarta. Saya tinggal di Karawang karena pertama saya memang uh, asli dari Karawang. Uh, saya punya rumah di Karawang. Uh, kalau misalkan saya harus pindah ke Jakarta, uh, pertama uh, properti di sana sudah mahal, rumah-rumah juga harganya sudah. And it doesn't end at this train station. Kadapi makes a quick stop to pray. Then to the bus station for another 30 minutes on the road. By this time, he is a little late for work. But in 2023, he may not have to wake up so early nor arrive late. Indonesia's first high-speed railway is due to open in 2023 and Kadapi will be right along the route. A month before the G20 summit in Bali, Indonesia, this station at one end of what will be Southeast Asia's first high-speed rail is almost ready for showcase. The entire track that runs from Jakarta to Bandung is 142 kilometers long. It is a relatively short distance, especially when measured against high-speed railway routes in other countries. China has some 40,000 kilometers of it. 
But traffic in Indonesia is notorious. Novelist famously wrote that people in the capital Jakarta spend 10 years of their life in traffic. And you only have to spend one morning on the road to believe it. Current travel time between Bandung and Jakarta is an average of three hours by car. The high-speed railway promises to cut that to only 40 minutes. Kadapi says it's definitely an option worth looking into. Kalau misalnya perjalanannya lebih dipangkas, ya mungkin sekitar satu jam lebih cepat itu sangat berarti bagi saya. Jadi saya bisa lebih uh, menempatkan waktu satu jam itu untuk keluarga saya. Uh, kalau misalkan seperti itu dengan biaya yang sedikit lebih mungkin lebih mahal sedikit dibanding uh, biaya yang saya harus keluarkan sekarang, saya akan memilih itu jadi prioritas uh, kereta cepat tersebut. By providing another mode of transportation, Indonesian Transportation Minister Budi Karya says the government hopes to diminish the prevailing car culture. We have a problem uh, who the people have money at times by car and they can go point to point. But for the mass transportation, we have to make it backbone, name is a high speed train, that concept make it the culture no traffic jam reduce the emission yeah this is the new culture minister karya says big cities like jakarta have been moving in this direction with ever expanding bus rapid and subway transit systems but the high-speed railway would connect towns and cities in the world's largest archipelago like never before plan to go all the way east to Surabaya, a 900-kilometer distance. Why start with Jakarta, Bandung, that route? We think big, we start small, but we focus. This is the philosophy of uh, the project. How will this benefit, though, the ordinary commuter? They still living there in the center of Java. West Java or uh, East Java in the, that city because very easy to go to the Jakarta and Surabaya. But the high-speed rail alone will not solve congestion. This, the governor of West Java, Ridwan Kamil, knows. It will be a combined strategy, combination of high-speed train, combination of mobility culture, non-mechanical, and upgrading the public transportation within the internal. When I was a city mayor, I created a series of wider sidewalks, connecting bridges for people to walk. I created bicycle culture. A wide array of transportation options, similar to that of economically advanced countries like China. China, whose Belt and Road Initiative has arrived in Indonesia through the Jakarta-Bandung High-Speed Railway. That's next on the program. China's astonishing rise to prosperity took place within just a few decades. From dirt roads to multi-layered highways, from road bikes to motor vehicles, and now transitioning to cleaner, more energy-efficient transportation, including electric-powered high-speed trains. Chinese technology now rivals the West's, and the government is keen to share the knowledge and expertise to the rest of the world. In 2013, President Xi Jinping unveiled the Belt and Road Initiative, an ambitious project that aims to connect China with the rest of Asia, Europe, and Africa through China-funded infrastructure and development projects. Chu Jiao Guan Jian Tung Dao Guan Jian Cheng Shi 
关键项目，连接陆上公路、铁路、道路网络、海上港口网络。Walking the talk, China launched the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, or AIIB, in 2015. In the same year, the Chinese president visited Bandung, capital of West Java in Indonesia. Soon after. The Indonesian government announced that Southeast Asia's first high-speed railway would be a joint venture with China. So uh, everything China can make now, and I remember uh, it was a bidding process between China government and Japanese Shinkansen, yeah, but China won because the affordability during that time. From then on. Construction went full speed ahead. A consortium of Chinese and Indonesian state-owned companies was formed, with majority of workers Indonesians and a team of experts and advisors from China. One of them, Wang Kun, a tunnel specialist from China Railway Engineering Corporation. We met him just outside a five-kilometer tunnel, on a bridge that he describes as unique. Uh, we now in this area is the full span. 呃，非常特殊的一个桥，它是一个呃一百八十米的一个呃梯形的一个桥，也是全线最高、装机最深的一个桥。那么我们这个桥呢，跨越的是一个非常深的一个峡谷，呃，最最难的是一个整个在施工过程中呢，要遇到一个洪水啊，要遇到一个雨季啊，那么这个整个装机的施工难度和整个桥的施工难度啊、呃，还是比较难的。在我们这个左手边呢是呃我们雅万高铁已经建成的六号隧道，那么六号隧道呢是整个雅万高铁最长的隧道，那么也是整个印度尼西亚和东南亚最长的一个隧道之一。那么这个隧道呢在建设过程中还是克服了很多困难，特别是呢它的特殊的地质情况、地质条件以及呢呃非常紧的一个工期。那么中国的建设者呢和我们当地印尼的建设者一道。呃，运用呢先进的装备，那么和我们丰富的隧道建设经验，呃，很快的、安全的把这个隧道打通。So you're confident Chinese technology is the best,、uh, best applied to to this project. 呃，我可以这么讲，中国的隧道方面呢，在隧道领域的这个技术呢是全球领先的，因为我们每年建成的隧道的里程，呃，几千公里。啊，所以呢，我们在这方面积累了非常非常丰富的呃资源和经验。Wang Kun's Indonesian counterpart Jamaluddin Kasim agrees. Teknologi China ini mereka mengedepankan adalah efisiensi. Jadi semua pekerjaan itu harus terukur. Kondisi geologi geologi tanah di Indonesia ini termasuk yang tidak baik atau sangat buruk bila dibandingkan dengan di China. Sehingga perlu model-model tertentu, perlu perlakuan-perlakuan tertentu sehingga kita bisa menggali terowongan ini tanpa ada eksiden atau kita atau kita adalah safety adalah nomor satu. Kalau untuk komponen, kalau dari sisi teknologi setiap waktu di update ya, setiap waktu selalu ada kekinian. Despite geological uncertainties, a total of 13 tunnels are being built along the Jakarta-Bandung line. Chinese involved in the project say it's proof of technology and knowledge transfer, and how China and Indonesia are equal players in the project. This and other countries, uh, the railway companies, the foreign companies, just sell products, just sell products to get orders, is different. 它意味着共同的承担风险，共同的去创造收益，它也是实践着“一带一路”倡议中的共商、共建、共享的基本原则的。这样的做法对印度尼西亚来说，其实有关的风险是要和中方一起来承担的。And while the structures and engineering feats serve as enduring monuments of this partnership. The benefits to ordinary Indonesians are already being felt ahead of the opening of the railway. China has sent some of its best and brightest in the railway industry to help and train Indonesians.
and ultimately be able to provide them employment. 25-year-old Wan Pungpeng is one of the Chinese technicians in this sprawling facility. Here, he supervises Indonesians who are welding metal to be laid on the tracks. And has it been easy working with uh, Indonesian workers? Indonesia是一个很美丽的国家。来到这之后呢，也确实是这样。我发现大家呢，就是嗯，我们和印尼员工呢，就是相处的很融洽，就是很友好。我觉得他们很勤劳，真的很勤劳。而且呢，就是很
kalau nanti udah punya modal biasa kumpul-kumpul aja dulu gitu hmm. langsung buka warung kalau nunggu gajian lagi <laughs> Perfect timing too because her store is just across their village's primary school. The school moved here from a location that's now on the path of the high-speed train. As you can see, there are villages around this construction site. Now along this whole stretch, there were also villages. So residents who were affected were compensated. And there was a school that was relocated and new buildings were built. One of Topic and Linda's daughters, Bintang, now attend school here. The sixth grader says she wants to become a doctor someday. For now though, being able to play football is what she likes best about her new school. Uh, yang sekarang lebih luas, yang dulu itu uh, gak luas, gak luas saja, uh, itu agak sempit. Is it easier for you to learn? Is it more comfortable for you to learn? Main bola uh, sama be, itu uh, uh, bermain sama teman-teman. The school's headmaster, Asip Samantri, says there was some initial resistance to the plan of the high-speed rail's contractor to move the school. But it wasn't long before educators and parents alike saw the benefits of a newer facility. Sekolah lama kita tidak memiliki yang namanya perpustakaan, library, nahev, terus lapangan, lapangan seperti ini nggak ada dan alhamdulillah sekarang kita memiliki lapang, punya masjid, punya juga uh, perpustakaan, terus kelas juga sangat mendukung karena uh, sangat representatif dan uh, nyaman untuk belajar mengajar dan juga di sini tempatnya di tengah-tengah kampung sehingga tidak terdengaran kebisingan dari kendaraan. Bintang's parents do see her learning better in the new facility. They now have higher hopes for her dream of becoming a doctor. Dia suka belajar sama teman-temannya di sini. Suka ngajak teman-temannya belajar di rumah gitu. Di rumah di sini. Dia suka ngajak teman-temannya belajar sama-sama. Senang, senang banget ya. Enak katanya. <laughs> Kalau di sana enak pemasan. Iya, mudah-mudahan tercapai dia cita-citanya. Lebih baik dan lebih ya kalau dia mau jadi dokter mudah-mudahan jadi dokter untuk Rizkinya. menolong orang lain gitu. Dan mudah-mudahan ada rezekinya gitu buat dia. A brighter future may now be a step closer. But here's what's making Bintang happy now. A motorcycle that her father could finally afford for her. Senang. Karena uh, papa itu uh, nambah rezekinya, dibeliin baju, uh, dibeliin makanan, sama sepatu. Uh, Teman-teman itu sudah bisa motor, nah, terus bintang diajarin sama papa buat bisa motor gitu, biar bisa ke mama gitu. A new motorcycle, a new store, a new school. All tangible fruits of labor and progress. But the joy of financial independence is priceless. More than just decongesting the country's roads, Indonesian officials predict booming economies around high-speed railway stations. Halim, the station closest to Jakarta, is itself a center of economic activity. It is the size of a small airport and will house shops, restaurants, and other basic and financial services. Okay, so where are we going? Where does this lift take us? Yeah, we go to the third floor. The floor of uh, the first uh, station for the high-speed railway in Jakarta. Dan di sini kita berada di lantai tiga. Uh, di sini kita punya ada enam plan, enam track. Kemudian uh, nanti kereta juga akan ada di sini. Uh, kemudian nanti menuju ke penland yang ada di belakang kita, menuju ke Bandung. Uh, lokasi ini memang nantinya akan menjadi pusat untuk uh, se- untuk intermoda. Jadi di sini tidak, tidak hanya kereta cepat, tapi di sebelah sana nanti akan terkoneksi dengan LRT Jakarta 
kemudian ada juga LRT Jabodebek serta ada busway. Jadi area ini memang dibuat cukup besar, dimensinya panjangnya 400 meter dan juga menjadi titik awal dari keberangkatan dari Jakarta menuju Bandung. Area platform ini merupakan lokasi tempat kita naik keretanya. Harapan saya adalah semua negara maju itu memiliki kereta cepat. Nah, kereta cepat ini menjadi tahapan kita Indonesia dari negara berkembang menuju ke negara maju. The development around the station is even more ambitious. Okay. And what about all this land here? What's going to happen here? So, in front of us there is a TOD, transit oriented development including the apartment, transit hotel, oriented development. development. Okay. Yeah. Apartment, okay. Hotel maybe and then some commercial area of course and uh, residence. So here? In front of us. In front of us. So the boundary okay. is here. So in front of us here until the corner. They can use any transportation connected to other area. Even the tuk-tuks? Becak, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe, huh? Bajai. And Gojek and, Go and Grab, right? Gojek, Gojek. Gojek and Grab also maybe uh, here. They already have some uh, visit here. It is a master plan that mirrors what has been the blueprint for China's rapid urbanization. Chinese experts have found that the high-speed railways have had positive effects on economic growth by stimulating GDP and increasing employment. Add to this the many roads, subways and airports, and you have one of the fastest growing economies that the world has ever witnessed. Indonesia hopes to be able to do the same. So when we have this high-speed train, it will... Uh promote what we call it the new economic growth yeah because within the stops of this high speed train we are agreed to plan a new town so it not just a means of transportation of transporting people and goods but also a means to create uh, a series of new town development uh, because we have to what we call it disperse yeah the, the the density of Bandung. We know this is not a quick return in terms of investment, but in the long term, uh, that's what we see the vision. A vision, a shared future between China and Indonesia and the rest of the region. One family, one school, one railway, and one city at a time.